EKG Bursts, Part 8. Tented T waves, long QT, and left ventricular hypertrophy. This triad strongly suggests failure of this organ system. Tented T waves, long QT, and LVH. If you see this triad, this is probably renal failure. The tended T waves occur because of hyperkalemia. The kidneys cannot get rid of potassium. The long QT is due to hypocalcemia. Remember, in renal failure, you become hypocalcemic because your kidneys can no longer make 125-dihydroxyvitamin D, i.e. calcitriol. And that is needed for absorption of calcium from the gut. And then LVH suggests renal failure in the setting of hypertension. And remember, those two are commonly associated with one another. How does an entrance block occur? An entrance block occurs when a damaged area of myocardium prevents incoming depolarization waves, but it retains its own automaticity. Thus, it will conduct impulses to surrounding tissue because it cannot be overdrive suppressed by normal descending conduction. And do you know the term given to an automaticity focus that has an entrance block? It is said to be parasystolic. So again, parasystolic focus is automatic in nature and it can deliver impulses to the myocardium but cannot be reset by impulses originating elsewhere. Now it's important to be able to distinguish these from PVCs, premature ventricular complexes. So how might you distinguish beats coming from a parasystolic focus from PVCs? Well, what I typically look for is that PVCs should be coupled to the preceding sinus beat by a fixed coupling interval. PVCs are coupled to the preceding sinus beat by a fixed coupling interval. Now, this works on most occasions, but there are a few exceptions. For example, if you see PVCs with different QRS morphologies, they'll often have different coupling intervals. And then sometimes PVCs with similar QRS morphologies also have different coupling intervals under different pathophysiologic conditions. And you should also know that because of this fixed coupling between PVCs and sinus beads, it is thought that there's a physiologic relationship between the sinus bead and the PVC. And some would even argue that this uh, favors a re-entrant or triggered mecha mechanism for PVCs. So the take-home message, parasystolic rhythms refer to an independent ectopic rhythm with a focus of origin that is protected uh, by an entrance block from descending impulses that cannot enter and reset the parasystolic focus. And finally, what is the classic EKG triad in parasystolic focus? Via hint, we just talked about one of them. Classic EKG triad in parasystolic focus number one, variable coupling between sinus beats and ectopic QRS complexes. Number two, fusion beats. And number three, and probably the trickiest one, a fixed common denominator of interectopic intervals between parasystolic extrasystole. Asymmetric tall T waves that are not narrow tend to be more characteristic of which of the following? Is it hyperkalemia, hyperacute ischemia, or normal variant? Asymmetric tall T waves that are not narrow. These tend to be more characteristic of normal variant T waves. If you see tall T waves that are symmetric, narrow, pointed, and have a pinched from above appearance, you should be thinking about hyperkalemia. If you see tall T waves that are symmetric, broad based, and not tented or pointed, and occasionally, occasionally associated with prolonged QT interval, then you should consider hyperacute ischemia. But if you see tall T waves that are asymmetric and not narrow, these are probably normal variant T waves. Causes of shortened QT interval other than hypercalcemia include these. Shortened QT can result from number one, hypercalcemia, number two, hyperkalemia, number three, 
hyperthyroidism. Number four, hyperthermia. Number five, digitalis effect. And number six, vagal stimulation. According to the Romhild Estes point score system, an R wave in V5 or V6 greater than this numeric value points more towards left ventricular hypertrophy. An R wave in V5 or V6 greater than 30 millimeters is a criterion in the Romhild Estes system for determining LVH. The three voltage criteria in their scoring system include the following number one, R or S in limb leads greater than 20 millimeters. Number two, an S in V1 or V2 greater than 30. And number three, an R in V5 or V6 greater than 30. Briefly, other Romhild Estes criteria include STT changes typical of LVH, left atrial abnormality, left axis deviation, QRS duration, and intrinsicoid deflection. So the take home message here is that LVH can cause many cardiogram changes besides voltage changes. So you should look for those also.